So let me show you some things here that are super interesting about constants. And to me, even a lot of Go developers don't even um, know about some of this stuff. When I say Go developer, there are pe people who have been writing code for like a year. Look at line 15 and 16 here. So we're using the keyword const, okay? And we're giving these constants a name like you would anything else. But I want you to notice there's no type information. Now that's not necessarily unusual. You saw me um, defining variables without type information in the compiler picking up the type. The thing is that constants aren't variables and they really have their own parallel type system. And the other cool thing about a constant in Go is that it can be of a type, but when a type isn't specified, a type isn't assumed, what happens is, is we treat that constant to be of a kind. And it's this idea of a kind that's super interesting. Because constants of a kind can be implicitly converted by the compiler where constants of a type are restricted. So if you look here, UI is a constant of kind integer. UF is a constant of kind float. The compiler can figure that out because of the decimal point. Now these constants here are of a type and they get bound to type. One way to show you that they're bound to type, I have to comment this piece of code out, um, is because once I said that this constant was of type u int 8, that means that the largest number we can put in there is that 255, right? Um, but you can see here, as soon as I try to use something larger than that type, compiler stepped in and said, sorry, that value is larger than a u int 8. If I go back to this being of a kind, there's, there's no problem here. Line 24 doesn't bug out anymore. All right. Now, because kind values can be implicitly converted, um, there's a promotion system that's in place. And the idea is that values of kind int can be promoted to float, and anything of float can be promoted to a type. So there's a promotion system. So, so look at this here. We're going to end up with a variable. The question is, what type of variable are we going to have? Well, let's look at the values that we're multiplying. And this is one of the reasons why constants really needed to be of a kind and there needed to be some implicit conversion. Or you'd be doing explicit conversions everywhere and go with these literal values. It wouldn't work. So this is a value of kind int. It's three. This is a value of kind float. But you still have to have like kind, just like you would have to have like type on both sides of, a, of an operation. But it's of a kind, so it gets the implicit conversion. And what Go is going to do is implicitly convert this to kind float. All right, so ints will, will promote to float. And so the float will take over this. And now what we'll do is math across um, two values of kind float. But now you want to put it into a variable. So we, now we have to do the conversion to the float 64. So we've got the kind in promoting to kind float, and then the conversion to float 64. Same thing here. This is of uh, kind int, but it will be promoted to kind float. This is already kind float. We can do the division, and you end up with a, a constant also of kind float here. Now, notice that these values are going to maintain their kind integer status. And so what we end up with is a variable of kind int, and that's going to be 0.